I have no idea what I'm gonna share. I have a bunch of stuff open, a bunch of little notes everywhere, and no real structure. I'm not sure if I'll be able to tie it all in together. And this is a new year, and maybe this is how the new year will begin. Well intended, having the intentions to do good, but not really sure how to go about it. I also mentioned in my last video that I try not to be hard on myself, nor should any of us. I used to. For instance, when it comes to my home, I wasted 10 years in which I could have been building, but I wanted everything to be perfect, and because of that I wasted a lot of time. I delayed beginning, and I don't make that mistake now with anything. I expect nothing to be perfect, not my work, not myself, but yet I still try. I think if my channel has had any success, it's because I show up every week. And for me, this is just a episode of show and tell. One of my favorite activities in school. And that's my favorite part of this platform. Anybody can start a channel and present anything. Show and tell. So I thank you all for being here today. Happy New Year, whatever that may be. And welcome. So here, because I'm here, randomly while looking for something else, I came across this collection of maps. And at first I thought it was the United States, or at least the one that we know. But in fact, it was much more than this. Here we can see the names of the contributors, cartographer, engraver, another cartographer, and seeming to be published around 1817, but they have a question mark here. So here we go. A general atlas containing maps of each of the United States. So already very interesting. Each of the United States? What are they talking about? And just beautiful. The artwork. Something about this old artwork. Really reminding me of the artists that made the money. Especially the bills. To this day, the art and the flowery patterns around these bills still in circulation today, but that come from times of old, is absolutely impressive, seeming to be done by a computer. And here again, I can see why they put a question mark. It's handwritten 1816, or in parentheses 1817, and looking like it's had some coffee spilt on it, or maybe some white wine. And here... They say geography is admitted to be, of all sciences, one of the most pleasing, and at the same time, the most useful. It is of almost universal concern. Persons of every rank and situation in life are more or less interested in, and reap advantage from, an acquaintance with it. And I agree. Ever since I was a child, I have enjoyed maps. So, here we go. This was the shocking part. While well, this was called Maps of Each of the United States, well, here we go. Here's our United States, including Tartary, number 25, down here. Hindustan, which is India. So this is old enough to include Tartary and India as Hindustan. And here we see the Eastern Hemisphere, Australia depicted as New Holland, and then we have the Western Hemisphere, much of the Amazon charted out, and the Great Lakes are here, California no longer an island, still calling this region of what I believe is Utah, Quivera, or one of the cities of gold. Here we see Drake's Harbor, which becomes San Francisco, or Sir Francis Drake's land, and Catalina, and many of these chained lakes that on other maps actually connect to the Mississippi and allow for river travel from the west to the east of the nation. And Greenland just always connected 
to the North Pole, this landmass always connecting. And here this is titled Mercator's Chart. And again, you see what I'm talking about, the landmass just continuing. This will show up a lot, the Blue River and the Colorado, and calling this region New Albion. And we still see Santa Fe. So, again, what I thought was interesting is this was called Maps of Each of the United States. So, it's as if all of these nations that we now call nations were once comprised of different factions and perhaps have been unified very recently. So, for example, calling China the United States of China. And here we go, just unifying all of these regions into one. And how about Tartary? Here we go. And again, the same writing, as if the map makers were also the artists in charge of making the currency on the bills that would be used for at least a hundred years. So here they're calling this Chinese Tartary. Here we can see Korea spelled with a C. And Tartary just completely populated. All these dots being cities compared to Korea, we just see a couple cities. Much more activity here in Chinese Tartary. And here we see Mongolia. So Chinese and Mongolian Tartary. And up here we have Siberia. And up here we see independent Tartary. Uzbeks down here. Turkmenians up here. The Kyrgyz Lesser Horde. No doubt a nation, a people. The cities along the rivers and near the lakes. And once in my research, I came across something telling me that the capital of Tartaria was called Sellingham. And I've lost that tidbit of research, but I'm always looking for Sellingham on these maps. And here we can see Lake Sellingham, perhaps? Maybe I'm not far. Do let me know if you've come across that. And maybe this video is getting boring. Let's look at something else. This is a collinear antenna, modern, this one. Folded dipole arrays, a directional antenna consisting of four collinear Yogi beam antennas. And here we can see a nice diagram of the frequencies. And we can compare this with any building of the old world. Take the Kölner Dom Cathedral in Germany and all the nubs along the surface area of the building serving as the same function. And there is a great experiment recently where someone takes a copper wire and sends it up with his drone about a hundred feet and hooks up a voltage meter to this wire and sure enough is able to gather electricity for free from the ether, from the air. And the higher you go, the greater the voltage. Hence why to this day, towers are placed as high as possible. And even in the old world, if it was just for form and not function, they would have never built towers on all these buildings. One, two, three hundred feet tall, unless it had a purpose. And really a lot of people talk about free energy and when will we have free energy, but I think the truth is we have it now. Again, all this radio, internet, and Wi-Fi is all free energy. It's just not being utilized in a liberating way, liberating for the people. It's being used to just charge and enslave us. These very devices sending wireless energy to and fro, unfortunately, are running programs that are indoctrinating the people and not liberating them. Even myself, I've talked about how I use solar power, and this is just gathering free energy from the sun. Just one example, Nikola Tesla made a instrument that would gather electricity both day and night, and it involved a wrapped copper coil, both 
above and below the ground, and in the center, one could tap into free energy. He applied for the patent, we are told, and was refused, even though he had working models. And recently, Matt of Quantum of Conscience was talking about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He made a whole video on it, and brought up some good points. And what I wanted to touch on was one of his questions. Why was this particular ruin so important? I mean, everybody knows about this tower in Italy by the time they're in the sixth grade. They really push this baby in school. I mean, as we've seen with all the thousands and thousands of exquisite buildings and towers that we could explore throughout the realm, they really push this Tower of Pisa. And Matt was asking why. And my answer to that is because it's crooked. They want to show us that the old world was stupid, and that they built this tower either crooked initially, or eventually it began to sink. And I think that's why they push this story of Pisa in the curriculum. So we'll look at these wonders in a less than superior light. If they can convince us that the Tower of Pisa was built inferior, then we might believe that all the structures of the old world were equally inferior. And the truth is, it kind of worked on me in my youth. And in reality, with the research that we do in this community, nothing could be further from the truth. And this Tower of Pisa is clearly simply the victim of a reset in what we would call a mud flood or liquefaction of the soil caused by great frequencies. We see something similar with one of the two famous towers in Bologna, the one next to the Asinelli Tower. And yet this event can be seen in America as well as every part of the realm. And when we begin to do research into America, we find that North America was victim to one of the greatest earthquakes of all time, the New Madrid earthquake. This earthquake was said to have reshaped the landscape overnight, causing the Mississippi to flow backwards, lakes and canyons forming in an instant. And yet, this is very interesting that this was not taught in school. Most people that you talk to have never heard of the New Madrid earthquake. And I think any time we're dealing with earthquakes and comets of the past, we're dealing with the reset. And next, because I'm under no pressure to make a good video, I'm going to show you what I bought at the antique shop. This is a vintage brass door stopper as we can see on the side here. I paid seven and a half dollars and thought it resembled some kind of tech. In fact, that was my only purpose. I was looking for either old books or magazines or some kind of tech. And of course, if we found some tech, nobody would recognize it as tech. Just like the different ornaments found in front of the antique fireplaces. And let me just show you a picture of that. This was shared with me via my P.O. box, and I thank you for this. An excellent example of anything but a fireplace. But back to my door stopper. This may have been something similar to what we see in front of the Antiquitech fireplaces. And what a stupid thing to just shove such a beautiful piece of ornamentation on the floor to hold your door open. I could think of a million things that would keep my door open, and none of them have this shape. And I think in the old world they would have just repurposed everything, and after a while people would just start calling things by their new names. And this thing became a door stopper made of pure brass. And next I want to finish up with something that I shared in my last video, this natatorium in Helena, Montana. It's been demolished now, but it stood from 1889 to 1941. They tell us it was the most important example of Moorish architecture in the Northwest. 
It housed the largest indoor pool in the world. 300 feet by 100 feet. That is a monster. And it was a hot spring pool. The waters were delivered via redwood pipes from the source a mile and a half away. Over 1 million gallons per day of hot and cold mountain spring water flowed through this building. And here again we can see how out of place this thing looks in the mountains of Montana, back when we should have cowboys and ranches. Here, looking to the southeast, a mysterious death and burial of the architect, who cares? He was involved in a scandal involving the construction of the Montana Capitol building, which we've looked at before. Again, the work of cowboys. And as if it's not enough to have such a building in the mountains of Montana, apparently they had a trolley. And these patrons seen here are simply waiting for the trolley. Here we can see the stunning entrance of this natatorium, looking like a cathedral. Just look at the size of this thing. Everything in the past was the world's biggest this and that. This is the world's largest natatorium, or hot springs, looking like a cathedral. And why would you tear such a thing down? To this day, there is so much space in Montana. And here is the picture I showed in my last video. The interior of this building. Now, does this really look like the work of 1800s cowboys in Montana? Here we can see a look at a very early photograph. And this thing is big enough to hold a submarine. Reminding me of stories in Nevada of lakes in the middle of the desert owned by the military that are said to connect to the ocean in the middle of Nevada. And such a sight brings me back to those stories. Now, they tell us at one point it was up to 12 feet, but we also see a picture where it appears to have been filled in and, like I said, eventually demolished. Here is the former site. And here, look from above, in 1953. And also really reminding me of the Sutro Baths in San Francisco that eventually burned down, we are told. And I don't think this had anything to do with bathing. This also really reminds me of the Salt Palace, or the Saltaire in Salt Lake City. Again, we saw the entryway of this building looking like a cathedral, but also reminding me of some kind of a circus tent, but a permanent one. Both with the Saltaire and this natatorium in Helena, Montana. And I think the cheap, disposable circus tent was somewhat modeled after these types of buildings. And unfortunately, they would call these types of buildings temporary and tear them down. Again, the water we're told this is the largest pool in North America, and really lending to the idea that the water played a part in this machine. For what device, I don't know. For what purpose, I don't know. Perhaps just pumping water around in the circuit board. And last, I just wanted to show this royal palace of Cambodia real quick. This is the building that we've all enjoyed viewing so much that seems to be still active and I don't know if it's possible but I just wanted to see if we could get some clues as to what's going on with this building for the most part I've only seen that video and it clearly seems to be putting off or gathering electrical energy from the atmosphere and there were some kind of tethers coming off of the antenna. Looks like we see something here, but maybe it's been edited. The Royal Palace of Cambodia is a complex of buildings which serves as the royal residence of the King of Cambodia. The Cambodian monarchs have occupied it since it was built in the 1860s. Even in Cambodia, just these ridiculous narratives that such a thing would be built in the Cambodian 1860s. The palace was constructed between 1866 and 1870. Four years. 
Here a look in 1885, and this bastion has now been removed, and we see the tech that we recognize in the background. And here again, the royal palace, just spires everywhere. And I think we can see these tethers on this one. There we go, looking like some chains, as we've often seen on old world buildings. And I would really love to get a second video. And here the Moonlight Pavilion, just a smaller building, but again we can see the tech on top. And there we go. Is this a mercury filled ball? Here are some other random pieces of tech in the courtyard. They tell us they are royal stupas. And let's have a little look at these close up. Unbelievable. And once again, tech. And as we were looking at before with these collinear antennas, the same thing going on, except not as cheap as this garbage, but performing the same function. All this surface area having purpose, as well as some of the most beautiful design ever. And what about this light? How is it getting its power? We see a bulb up here, but no wires. And look at this thing. Unbelievable. We would be told this is all religious. And as always, what do I know? Maybe it is. Let me know your thoughts. But for today, I think that's it. I thank you so much for joining me. Do have a blessed day and year. Make sure to join me next week. Check out my coffee and other goods. And of course, I love you all.